This happened because I was trolling along on the internet, and I came upon a song performed by two musicians who interest me, a female singer and a male guitar player. The song they were doing was a classic, Strange Fruit, made famous by Billie Holiday. It's a challenge to take on a song that is virtually owned by another performer. So I listened to their version, and while I was doing that, I got a bit of an education on the song by the comments section. I learned that the lyrics were written by a man, a white man, a white Jewish man named Abel Mirapol, who was a high school English teacher living in New York City and a member of the Communist Party, not so uncommon in the depths of the Depression. Mirapol published the song under the pseudonym Lewis Allen, taken from the names of his two sons, both stillborn. I note that only to indicate the presence of tragedy in his life. He and his wife, Anne, would later care for and adopt the sons of Ethel and Julius Rosenberg, who were quite famously executed for treason. I note that to indicate the complexity both of his life and the times. Mirapol was moved to write the song after seeing a photograph taken in 1930, which showed two black men lynched in Indiana, surrounded by a crowd of white men who looked proud of what they had done. He published the lyrics in 1937 and performed the song with a black vocalist, Laura Duncan, at several locations in the city. Reports vary on how the song was introduced to Billie Holiday, but she recorded it in 1939. There was some trouble in doing that because of the undisguised brutality registered in the lyrics, but eventually it became her best-selling record. and the standard version of the song. The song has been covered over the years by many performers, including Nina Simone, another singer I admire. Thanks to the marvelous internet, I was able to listen to her sing it, along with a brief commentary. It deals with America and the black and white problem, she said. It is the ugliest song I have ever heard. It opens a wound completely. At the peak of her career, Nina Simone left the country and lived in France for the rest of her life. It is an ugly song, spawned by an ugly photograph of an ugly deed, pastoral scene of the gallant South. I don't think you can argue with Lady Day's stripped-down heartfelt rendition, still available in several clips on the internet, but I think that the more modern version I heard was also excellently played. They killed it, as the saying goes which you have to do with that song. All of the agony and the horror came out, and the song itself still resonates. I would say that in this year, 2015, the lynchings have stopped, but the bitterness continues, that blood at the root. Among the comments on the song was one which questioned how a young white woman could possibly attempt to sing the song, or even think that she might have the right to try. There was a show on PBS the other night, on the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK. I thought I might watch it, but I did not. Maybe the trailer they ran was enough for me. All those people dressed in the white with the hoods and the burning crosses and one of the men shouting, Do you believe in white supremacy? Receiving an answering roar. And the excited voice of one man saying that the greatest day of my life when I joined up with the Klan. White supremacy. White supremacy? I think Hitler was after the same thing with his Aryan deal, but he took a tough hit in the 1936 Olympics when Jesse Owens spoiled his party in Berlin. We hear a lot about Jackie Robinson in 1949. How conflicted must Jesse Owens have been in 1936, the year of his Olympic triumphs, and the year that Abel Mirapol wrote Strange Fruit? White supremacy? I think the best way to establish this would be to take a small group of people, let's say a dozen, as a sample out of the much larger group of the clan, and examine them carefully for signs of supremacy over the rest of humanity. I have to believe that what we would find would be, if anything, supremely ordinary, something less than that, maybe a few who are slightly better, nothing of statistical significance. 
As for the person who doubted the qualification of the singer to sing the song because of her experience and the color of her skin, I'm guessing it has to be either a wildly passionate fan of Billie Holiday or a proponent of black supremacy. More likely, it's caused by the pain from that deep and ugly wound.